Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is part three of our series of short videos about building a Java app to extract data from Jira. In this installment we'll be logging into the Jira server and uh, getting back a response that should include our J session ID which we'll then use to authenticate future requests. Jira provides a REST API that we can contact to request a login. We just need to pass it our own credentials. Well, somebody's credentials, valid credentials, a uh, username and password. So let's open up our script and get to work. now. I already have it open because uh, I just finished recording the last episode. We need three data points to call this login to Jira function on which we'll be working today. The first one is a URL that is the endpoint for our, our login service and the second then our uh, username and a password. To get started with we have this URL and it could really be divided into two parts here because the, the first part of the URL we'll use for this login request. We'll also use it later on when we make future requests. So I'm going to call that our base URL, um, string base URL equals something. And then we'll also have our login service URL, which will be suffixed onto the base URL to form our complete URL for requesting a login. Then we'll also have our login user name and our login password and now for our base URL we can get that from Jira itself so I go up to Java uh, Jira here and I have my server um, actually let me just cut the whole cut and paste the whole thing in so base URL um, so we've got our protocol our server the port on which we're running a Jira and then the rest of this which we don't need right now that's just for the website there so uh, Jira rest is the beginning and I'm just going to terminate that with a forward slash um, so we don't have to worry about where we're adding it later so that is the the base portion and then onto that we will append uh, concatenate auth one session. This is the standard path to the login service. Now because this is a brand new install that I just did, we'll do admin admin. Um, those are the defaults that everyone changes as soon as they've installed J uh, Jira on their server. And that's it here. Now a couple things I should mention really quick. So this is uh, this username and password, they're important. They're not only necessary for the login, but they also dictate what issues you will be able to extract later on when we're using it to do data pools. So the um, Jira APIs and the, the plugin who's, who, whose API we will call, whichever plugin we're calling, uh, including the IonaFX Business Intelligence Export API that will finish up using after we've tried a few others but they all respect issue level security so if your user doesn't have access to see the issue in Jira you won't actually be able to pull out any data using the API either um, the second thing that I need to mention here is this cookies based authentication we'll be using cookies to authenticate and send our username and password over the wire basically unprotected we can do that because this traffic will stay on our internal company network that way uh, that, in fact, that's the way most business intelligence and reporting extracts work. You're, you're doing it inside your own company. If you need to send it out over the wild west of the open internet, then you should use OAuth for authentication or something like that. And um, it's not a very normal use case, but I'll provide a link in the uh, description that points to Atlassian's documentation for doing uh, OAuth work. So let's get back here. So to change our function signature, so we're passing in these things, right? So a base URL, a login service URL. You know what, I'm just going to shorten that to login URL. Then we have our login username and our login password. Those are the things that we will be sending. Well, we haven't sent them yet, have we? We're ready to receive them. We haven't sent them. So well, we've got base URL, login URL, password pop them up there. That's the way I meant to do it. And then these will need to be typed. So strings. And speaking of types, I don't like typing, so I'll cut and paste. Okay, so we've created our URL, our username and password. We are sending them to when we make the function call and our function is set up to receive these parameters. So there we go. 
now then we need to code this function, don't we? So in here, I'm going to create a try block, and well, a try catch block, catch exception, and I don't put the declaration and the return inside the try catch block because I want it to return something whether what happens in here succeeds or fails. So we'll do. Um, so what we need to do is we need to create a URL object. And then we need to use the URL to create a connection. And then we will set some properties of that connection, like the request type, things like that. And we need to actually send some data. So we, we need to create create some J a JSON post data that we will send. And once we've got all that in place, then we just send our request. and handle our response. Now if anything goes wrong, handle errors. That's the basics of it. Me save because I'm the kind of guy who likes to save things. So let's start fleshing out these things. The first thing we need to do is, well we'll need variables for all this, won't we? So uh, we'll need a URL object. URL. No, we'll need a connection object. Now in, in this world, Java here, this is a URL, HTTP URL connection. We'll call it con, and we'll set it to null as well. And to, to use these two things, we will need to import some libraries. So the first thing that we need to import is java.net URL to create a URL. And we'll also need to import um, java.net uh, HTTP URL connection. Then we will need to create some input. That's just a string. Don't need to import any libraries for that. Next, we'll need to convert that input string into bytes that we can stream down the wire. So we'll need a, a stream object to handle it in that form. That's an output stream. Output stream. And of course, it's special. We need to java.new, java.net. There we go. Import. Uh, this is a Java. This is I/O work. Um, output stream. Now, when it's, we need that same sort of stream handling when we're reading in the response, and that would be an input stream reader object. But we can actually create that inline and we'll dump that response into a, a buffer object, a buffered reader. So um, looks like we're going to need both of those things. Let me um, let me see. I'll do the buffered reader because that's the buffered reader. We'll set that to null. But we need to import both the buffered reader and the input stream reader that will feed it. So um, these are both I.O. things. So buffered reader and import java.io.inputStream reader. And then we'll, we have a, a temporary just a string to hold our output as it's coming across each line that we're reading. And I think that's just about it. Um, let's get coding, right? So, well, first let's move these up to the top, get them out of the way. Although created where they are, they would nicely error out to tell us that we didn't do it. Um, here we go. So we've created some variables, and now we'll start using them. Create a URL object. Whoops, we already created it. URL equals new URL, and we'll pass this in our base URL plus our login URL. Those two strings together uh, will form the input that creates a URL object. And next we'll open a connection using that URL object. So our connection object, and we'll cast it to be sure what's going on. URL connection versus just a URL connection. This is an HTTP URL connection. Um, URL dot open connection. Now it's been it's been created. It hasn't actually been opened yet. It hasn't actually been used yet. We just created it. So we need to set some properties here. Uh, first, we'll set a flag that we intend to receive a response from this. We're not just sending in some data. So we'll do that with the um, set do output to true. 
And, uh, now this is uh, the the method we'll be using here is a post. That's what this API requires. And then we want to tell it what type of data we're passing back and forth. So that's a request property, and that property is content type. And our content type is JSON, so application JSON. So that's its property set. Let's create that JSON that we're going to send. That's our input string. And this is a bit tedious, but it's so short that I'm just going to do it by hand rather than creating a, you know, parsing, creating an object and then parsing it out. So let's see, we'll terminate that and we'll, you know, that's one annoying thing about brackets is it always closes things off for you. Often it's useful, but when you're doing things the wrong way, like typing your own JSON, it's annoying. I'll put that in password. And we'll need to close that off. And colon. And then we'll wrap the login password in escaped double quotes. So that will terminate with a escaped double quote and then brackets hey that looks like JSON so now we're ready to to send our our request out and first we will we'll get that output stream object so OS equals conduct get output stream and we'll load our JSON into the stream as an array of bytes then and, and buffer it all up. So that's os.write, our input, but as bytes, so get bytes. Let's get bytes. And then oh, we're ready to flush. Send our request off. Now our response. Now this, we when we get it back, we just uh, we want to check that we got a, a good response. So if the response code that we get back is 200, then we'll do all this stuff. Otherwise, we'll we'll do something else. We, we won't use it. So BR, that's our buffered reader, right? Did we create a buffered reader yet? Yes, we did. Of course, we declared it up here, buffered reader BR OS. And our output, we'll just call that O. Is everything right? Good. So down here, our buffered reader object is a new buffered reader. And we're going to use that input stream reader to populate it that I talked about earlier. Input stream reader. So our input stream reader is going to take con.get input stream. Whew. So now we have our input that we got back from our connection, our response, uh, into a stream read, input stream reader, and then buffered it up in a, a buffered reader. And um, we'll just take that, oh, you know what? I think if I'm going to call it input, I should call it output as well. So my output is empty. I will take while I'm going through this buffered reader's lines. Well, output equals br dot read line and we'll take that while these lines are not null we will read them into our login response object login response plus equals this output line that we got take them out of lines so and then once all that's done once we've read every line and we've ended up with null at the bottom we can disconnect our connection All right, I think it's time to test this. Um, we still haven't implemented any error handling, but that's all of our functionality. So save, and we'll go back here. Oh, I missed something, line 36. Oh, I said it twice. Output stream cannot find symbol output stream. Did I import output stream? So I imported it. And 34 output. Hmm. I cannot find the symbol. Let's see, does it say anything else? Get 
input stream. Okay, so that's easy to fix. Input stream. Save that. And get input stream. So that should simplify my error message just down to the output stream error message. So cannot find symbol output stream. Is output stream. Save. Typos. Oh, it compiles. How many ups do I have to do? Five. Automate. Okay, so it compiles once again. Now the funny thing about testing this is um, I didn't actually get any output. I don't. I don't see any errors, which is nice. But I think it's time we added some deep debug output and, and in fact we should really set up our full error handling. Um, we'll do that in our next episode and I hope to see you then. Thanks.